So on this wonderful Monday morning, I have to ask, did you have a look at Psalm 139? I hope you did. I hope you're getting into this absorbed by the word type reading, this oral interpretation where it brings reading of the Bible to a new level. Um, and not really a new level, but just a level we have forgotten for the last hundred plus years because of the way we were taught to read, uh, what we read, and the formalization of church where everything had to be done perfectly. And you know, in some churches, and the churches in which I was raised and some in which you were raised, there was really no place for emotion or for bringing any drama to the word. Now, before we go to 139, I want to remind you of a way to do this that really, really helps. People often ask me, they'll say, you bring out all, all this new stuff that we've never seen in scripture. Well, it was always there. Um, the reason we didn't see it was we didn't enter scripture. And that's not knocking anybody. It's just the way we tend to be. So what do I mean by that? If you see Jesus doing the Sermon on the Mount, I want you to put yourself in the crowd. Uh, then I want you to view things from the viewpoint of Jesus. He's sitting down teaching because that's the way you taught back then. It's the way I prefer to do now. Uh, and so as you're looking through his eyes, what are the expressions? What are the little conversations going on in the crowd like? And there, there would be conversations because he is blowing up stuff in the Sermon on the Mount. How many times he says, you've heard it said, but I say. And you, people's eyes are going to be getting big. As you're sitting there, I want to ask you, are you hungry? Is the sun on you? Are you hopeful that this is the anointed one? Or are you terrified that if it is, what will Rome do to you? Factor in all of these type of things. Is this in the morning? Is the sun in your eyes? Does it make it look like he's glowing? Or is it behind you? And so it just kind of lights him up as your shadows fall forward. Think of all this. And then look at the way he, he says his words. You know, blessed are the poor and blessed are... The, and by the way, if, you, if you're trying to say, well, it means just, you know, poor, you know, these poor little people's hearts. And please remember that Luke 6 has another version of the Sermon on the Mount. It's really a sermon on a level place. Jesus is giving the same sermon, but Luke records it differently. And he also adds the bad news for the rich and powerful part that Matthew didn't put in. So check it out and then bring a motion to it that you would have felt in the crowd or that Jesus would have been putting into the words. But today it's Psalm 139. Uh, I love Psalm 139, I really do, for a variety of reasons, but this is not gonna be a lesson on Psalm 139. It's gonna be a, how do we read it? Oh Lord, you've searched me and you know me. You know when I sit, when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You, you hem me in, behind and before. You've laid your hand on me. Such knowledge is it's too wonderful to me, too, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the, the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. 
How precious to me are your thoughts, O Lord. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. Grains of sand. When I'm awake, I'm still with you. If only, if only you would slay the wicked, O God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I, do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, did you get Psalm 139? The jumble of thoughts, the ups and the downs, the comfort and fear, the I, I need you near me, but I can't even find a way to get away from you. The, you know, I hate the people that hate you, God, so, you know, honor my hatred of them. You know, all of this stuff is in there. In other words, it's a very, very, very human prayer. It is not a stock Middle Eastern poem la di da di da ya. It's a real cri de coeur. It's a cry from the heart. So read it that way. If you go into Lamentations, read the lament. Read Job with the haughtiness of his counselors and the very assured arrogance that they know what is right. And then with the confusion and pain in Job. For when it's his turn to speak, all of the emotions are all the time. He'll tell God, if I die, you're gonna miss me. Another time, I know I'm gonna walk on this earth again and you're gonna sort this out. And another time, I, you know, I challenge you, God, come down here and tell me what's wrong with me. You tell me what I've done wrong. And other times, he's, he's mourning the loss of his life. He grieves for his loss before he dies. He's going to miss himself. And yet when we read it, we read it like a textbook, not the just horrible, torturous ordeal of a man with well-meaning, but really bad friends. I think we've all been, been really bad counselors and friends at times. I can remember some things I've said to people that were in pain and I thought this will help and it was stupid. It absolutely was, the worst thing I could have said. And a moment's thought might have stopped me. And here's the thing, I thought I gave a moment's thought, but I really didn't. I can remember talking to the mother of a severely handicapped child. Uh, won't go into it, just the rest of that woman's life, she was 24 seven going to be on duty for this child. And I said, I don't know if I could have handled what you handle. Now that sounds like I'm trying to be empathetic, but it does, it, it's not to, the, not to her, not to people in that situation. Her, she looked at me and she goes, Patrick, you don't have a choice. <laughs> and all the heavens said, duh. I needed to learn how to read the lament Psalms with lament and get it. And the battle Psalms with battle. I needed to see things like Psalm 137. Um, 137, if, you, if you've got your Bibles open, you know, Bible, the, the pre-printed version of what you've got on your phones, uh, it's a lament. You know, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. Have you ever longed for a place that's gone now? You know, if I were to go back to Scotland and try to live there, I wouldn't feel at home for a day. Not a day. It's been too long. The people have changed. The uh, area has changed. The buildings have changed, all that, which is what they're supposed to do. I'm not complaining. The change is built into the universe. It's supposed to change. And so kind of like when my parents used to watch old Andy Griffith reruns, I get it. You know, I don't think Mayberry or a place like Mayberry ever really existed, at least not to that degree. 
But the reason it became so popular and is still being rerun is because people longed for the old days, even if they didn't exist. And so whenever I look at this by the rivers of Babylon, we're outside of our place. We are now prisoners of Babylon. We said, we lay down and wept when we remembered what we had, what was lost. The tormentors are demanding songs of joy. But they say, how can, we, how can we sing a new song in this land? And then we can understand whenever they say, remember God, what, what they did to us. And even, you know, it says, you, know, you watch out, daughters of Babylon, because he's coming for you for what you did for us. He who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Well, there's a prayer we probably would not appreciate in our assemblies, right? Then why did God immortalize it in the major theological tome that the people knew? They knew some of the other books. They've certainly been read the law to them many times, but the Psalms was their song book. It was their devotional book. The Psalms lived in them, which means God's okay with us venting. God's okay with even us asking him to do stuff he's not gonna do because he is God. God's not going to go grab their babies and, and bang their heads against the rocks. But he understands why we would say that. And again, Psalm 139, he understands a thought in our head before we even had it. He gets it. He understands why it's there. But we don't get this unless we read the words. And we understand, like back in Psalm 139, you know, when I sit and when I rise, there should be a difference between the way you say sit and rise. Going out and my lying down. Going out, lying down. You hear that? Pay attention to your cadence. And I would suggest to you that you might want to pay attention to your cadence even when you talk. Uh, I've listened to a lot of news people that I've wondered, how do people continue to listen to this? Um, they're, you know, every, you know, da 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 Or they have... They have the same cadence for every verse, rather for every sentence, where they end it. And a very British thing is to end it with a question. Boy, it's hot today, isn't it? You know, you, now you, uh, you have to have a response because they just ask you to agree with them that today is hot. Uh, it's, there's, and after a while, that even wears out me, even though I should have been quite used to it. When I go back, I'll, I'll, oh yeah, the questions are at the end. Um, be careful. Think about how you speak. Maybe the reason you don't get on with somebody is because you're having a difficult way, a rather difficult time listening to their voice and they're having a difficult time listening to yours. You know, my voice is not for everybody. I know that. I've been told that, but I already knew that. Nobody's voice is. So use what you've got. Pay attention to the word. And I'm gonna leave it there, all right? Put yourself in the scripture. If you are using these for small group Bible studies, would you please let me know, uh, patrick at rcfarber.com, if, and if you are using them, and if you're assigning homework, and if you're trying to learn how to do this as a group, because that's the way to get scripture inside of you. If you guys work on, or I say guys, inclusive, uh, all, all of you females and males out there, if you were to decide to work on a chapter together and then compare the way you read it, not to judge who wins, but rather to say, that was interesting. I could pick up something from that. Or, ooh, I just heard that. I'm, I'm not going to do that one. And you put it all together and learn, guess what you're doing? You're repeating scripture. You know what repeating scripture again and again and again? You know what the word for that is in Hebrew? It's the one we translate meditate. It's how you meditate on the word. And you'll never be able to get these pictures out there until you get them in here. So spend some time. It's more important that you study one section until it gets in than it is to read 30 sections. All right, I gotta let you go. Next week, something completely different. And Probably you're ready for that. But if you would like to have a long form, I don't know what that would be, an hour, two hours, three hours 
of a video just talking about oral interpretation and how to use it in reading, you let me know. And if enough of you do write in, then that'll tell me, yeah, this is a need I need to address. And we'll post it, but not on a Monday. All right. God bless. Cheers.